How do these changes to the Democratic primary calendar better reflect the diversity of the party and of the country? You know, I think it's literally just what you said. The Democratic Party has realized not just the electorate has grown and, and changed. They are looking at the changing demographics of this country and putting the power back in the people's hands and letting them determine who is going to be the best candidate moving forward to be president. I think it's really powerful to hear that this, the president of the United States is saying, what worked in the past is actually no longer going to work for us in the future. It's also showing that people are paying attention to what black voters want, to what Latino voters want. You know, I know there's been a conversation about like, what's going to happen in the Midwest, what's going to happen in rural areas. There are obviously rural areas in South Carolina and Georgia and all these other places. But to bring Michigan up a little bit is extremely important. And again, this is the party listening to the base of voters who want their voices heard, who too often in the primary process says that we have seen in presidential campaigns before, by the time you get to some of these more diverse and inclusive states, unfortunately, really good candidates have not even made it that far. And so I'm hopeful that this will actually be a more inclusive and fair process going forward. Well, and to that, to that point, uh, Debbie, like when I was running for president in 2020, I advocated uh, for changing the primary calendar. I think we ran ads in Iowa saying that they should do that back then. Uh, I mean, what do you make of how these changes, this new ordering of states, is going to affect candidates themselves, where they campaign, how they campaign, the issues that they address as part of their presidential primary campaign? Well, I think, um, Joaquin, finally it's going to give an opportunity for presidential candidates to focus on talking directly with the largest ethnic voting bloc that we're going to see in 2024, which is the Latino voters. I'm really happy to see that they've included Nevada in one of those states, which has a pretty large Latino population, which actually sent uh, Senator Cortez Masto back to the Senate in 2022. Now, we still have a lot of time, and from what we're seeing, it seems like the Republican National Committee is going to make it difficult for the, some of the state uh, legislatures and the Secretary of States to move those primary uh, voters up and, and the primaries up. But I think that we need to focus also on the fact that we have right now in the state of Florida, and I know that you're going to mention it, but that we have someone who's leading the state who's uh, literally assaulting our democracy. Um, and we need to be paying attention to what's to come. We know that Ron DeSantis is putting his political ambitions first, using his governorship as a stepping stone, and he has been rising the cost of working families. It's becoming more and more unaffordable, but at the same time curtailing our freedoms. And so I think that the DNC should be focusing on that as well, because it's extremely dangerous what we're seeing here in Florida. Well, and David, uh... Not everybody is happy with uh, these changes. NBC News reports that the, the chairwoman of the Iowa Democratic Party says replacing Iowa will expose the party to charges that they have, quote, turned their back on Iowa and rural America. Do you see a downside for Democrats as they make these changes? No, look, that's a, the home state position, I'm sure, of Iowa leadership tonight. But it overlooks the fact that not only is South Carolina racially diverse, it's also diverse across Industries, a heavy agriculture state, a heavy, heavy uh, rural state, as much as, as it has urban corridors as well. But the key here, as as Debbie and Alencia have said, is also the racial and ethnic diversity in South Carolina and other states like Nevada that simply is not represented in Iowa. So good for Democrats, and I think it's telling by contrast that Republicans are sticking with Iowa and New Hampshire, which listen, two great states who have contributed to the political history of the United States. But the truth is, it represents the majority of the base of the Republican Party, which is white people and largely middle and upper class whites and evangelical whites and other communities of faith within the white uh, within the white demographic. Republicans are sticking with that. They're doubling down with that. Democrats today are saying, look, we want to represent the diversity across the United States with this move.